All right, in this video, we'll be looking at 5.6 chromosomal inheritance. There's a couple of things to talk about on this video. Um, we'll be looking at just the general idea of how genes are transmitted, and if there's something wrong with that gene, what, what is the result of that, and then how genes are transmitted and not necessarily, uh, you know, if a parent doesn't have that, how is it given to the next generation, which we kind of have an understanding of already, but it's good to see examples of that. Um, so this is an example of a mutation. So on the left, you have a normal uh, channel, this CFTR. I'm not sure what that means, but I do know that if you have the wrong one, notice it is a channel that's blocking the um, flow of chlorine ions, which causes mucus to build up on the outer uh, surface here, which this is actually the inside of the lungs. This is what causes a disease called cystic fibrosis. This protein is shaped oddly, therefore it doesn't function. The normal gene, because genes are on the DNA, DNA codes for proteins, protein shape determines their function. A normal gene creates a normal shaped protein that functions appropriately. A mutated gene creates an abnormally shaped protein that does not function properly. And so if that mutated gene is passed from one generation to the next, that can result in a genetic disorder. Mutations can manifest in genetic disorders that negatively affect offspring, in this case, cystic fibrosis. Of course, evolution depends on the uh, mutations that positively affect offspring. And so all change over time is caused by mutations. We'll get into that when we get into that unit. Um, but I think that's important to note. Um, but we'll be looking at more negative connotations for that in this particular section. So one of those things that can happen is something called non-disjunction. So if you look at the word non-disjunction, uh, junction means to join. Disjunction means not to join. Non-disjunction means not to not to join. So you could think of that as they're not separating, right? Um, and so non-disjunction is when chromosomes fail to separate in meiosis, whether they fail to separate in meiosis 1 when homologous pairs separate or in meiosis 2 when sister chromatids separate. Either way, this creates gametes that have extra chromosomes or have uh, deficient chromosomes or fewer chromosomes than they should have. Uh, typically, you'll see this expressed as if uh, non-disjunction happens in meiosis 1, all four gametes will be broken, and you'll have N plus 1, which is a haploid, plus an additional chromosome. And you'll have some that are N minus 1, a haploid, minus the chromosome that it should have. See, what's happening here is green and purple should have separated here, right? But they didn't, and green and purple all went one direction. And so this cell um, got all of them, and this cell didn't get any green or didn't get any uh, of the big purple. And so um, that had this that had an effect on all the big chromosomes are up here, and none of the big chromosomes are down here. Now, if it happens in meiosis two, you'll have two normal gametes and two that aren't normal. You have an n plus one and an n minus one, um, and this can affect phenotype. Uh, a lot of times, the resultant zygote would just be spontaneously aborted, uh, meaning that the the zygote would not work and it would just spontaneously just die like a miscarriage um, because the offspring wouldn't be viable. But in many cases that the offspring can live, there's just going to be some phenotypic uh, genetic challenges. And so here's some examples, uh, non-disjunctional sex chromosomes. So you have a normal male XY and a female that has a non-disjunction where one of the eggs has XX instead of just an X, right? And the other egg has nothing. And so uh, well, since the X chromosome is required to live, the 0Y is a non-viable offspring. The XO, so 1X and just nothing else, is something called Turner syndrome. You can have a female that has three X chromosomes, typically normal, um, probably a little taller than other females, but other than that, fairly normal. And then you can have males that have XXY or an extra X chromosome. This is called Klinefelter syndrome. Another example of this that is more common is called trisomy 21, three chromosomes, 21st pair. We typically call this Down syndrome. And so uh, this is an example of 
a non-disjunction on the 21st chromosome. So some examples here of some recessive disorders. I mentioned one, and the reason I mentioned recessive disorders is because notice in this particular case, <clears throat> in well, both of these cases, no, the parents are, are quote unquote normal. They're called carriers because they're carriers of that recessive allele. In this case, uh, none of the children have it because, well, there wasn't enough alleles to go around. But if both parents have are carriers for that particular allele, this can cause the disease in uh, theoretically one in four of their offspring. Cystic fibrosis is an example of this. The number of carriers for cystic fibrosis, I believe, is like one in 2,500. And so there's a really small chance that two people or carriers are going to get together. But if that happens, they can't. there can be a problem um, if, if cystic fibrosis occurs. Uh, hemophilia is one that we talked about in a previous video with sex-linked traits. Uh, an example of a dominant disorder is called Huntington's disease. And Huntington's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that is usually fatal or eventually fatal. Uh, not usually. It always is fatal. Uh, and it doesn't always express itself until later in life, but it's still always past. And there's this idea of um, called penetrance, which... Um, you know, a certain amount of the, you know, after a certain age, you will definitely express that disease. And so you can see here, uh, the younger an individual is, the less likely they are to express it. But as they get older, there's a really high likelihood that they will develop that disorder and then um, have it. And so this is the kind of thing that um, advanced genetic testing is good for because by the time an individual has reproduced, you know, by the time they're 40, they still haven't even expressed that disorder yet and they've already had children. And so, and then they find out when they're 60 that they have Huntington's and their children are in their 20s. And so that, you know, you get the idea. And so this is just one example of that that can occur uh, where the parents may not even show the particular uh, disorder, but have already passed it to the children.